Okay, um, students, this is an uh, interesting case, um, uh, good for clinical assessment. Remember, patient comes to you, you're trying to sort out the problem. So firstly, it's about the patient, then it's about the problem, and then uh, it's history examination, special investigation. So history is always firstly about the patient. This is a 45-year-old gentleman with no comorbidities. He's right-handed, and this is a right-hand injury. Uh, he's currently unemployed, no comorbidities. Um, his injury occurred five days ago. He was working with an angle grinder and sustained a laceration to the right thumb. This has been sutured at Victoria Hospital and uh, he now presents with his problem of inability to uh, extend the thumb. So that's the history. <coughs> From the history you can ascertain that you suspect that there's some uh, particular pathology with the musculoskeletal system that he cannot extend the thumb. Uh, the question is, uh, is, is what structure has been injured and that's what the, what the examination is going to help us ascertain. So, first thing is look, well what can you see? You can see there's a lot of uh, staining in this area here, but um, I can just tell you that that's from the uh, adhesive dressing that was put on uh, which has now collected a lot of dirt. Uh, the next thing to notice, the most obvious thing, is a sutured laceration. A sutured laceration, not just a wound, not just a cut. Uh, you must use the correct terminology, that's a sutured laceration and you must describe exactly where it is and, and what shape it is. So it's a transverse laceration which has been sutured over the dorsal aspect of the right thumb, just proximal to the interphalangeal joint. It's approximately two centimeters in length and uh, it, there are no signs of any infection. So that's on observation. The other thing on observation is the fact that there is a um, uh, a classic uh, uh, ex, ex, uh, a slightly flexed posture to the thumb. Um, he does not assume a normal hyperextended or extended position. It's held in flexion. So that's all you can really notice. The rest of the hand examination is otherwise uh, uh, normal. Feel. So what are we going to try and feel for you? This gentleman has sustained a laceration. Really what you want to know is, has he damaged the bone? Has he damaged the tendons? Has he damaged the nerves? So the tendons you can't feel. The bone you can obviously palpate the skeleton and make sure there's no instability. It doesn't feel like there's any fracture here. And then when it comes to the nerves, he has diminished sensation right over there, over the dorsal uh, radial aspect of the thumb. This area is completely numb. So we know that he's at least cut a sensory nerve in this area. Uh, when we ask him to move, he can flex. Flex your thumb for me. Down. Just going to change hands here, down, bend down, down to the, down to the table, down, down like this, like this. like this, no you can, you can, push down, push down like that, okay, and I lift it up, you see you can't lift it up, but I can lift it up for him, I can lift it up for him, so you can see he, he does not have a fixed flexion deformity, that's an extensor lag, in other words the extensor tendon is not pulling it up, but he, there's no contracture, no fixed flexion deformity. I let go and it droops down again. From this position, bend down to the, to the, to, to the rest of your hand. His flexor tendon is working. He can pull hard against me. Okay. So, sometimes I've discussed this with the students and I say, what's the problem? And they, they, they say, well, this might be a, 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 a radial nerve injury. Well, clearly it's not. Um, even though he does have diminished sensation, uh, in the radial nerve area. The problem is the radial nerve supplies the muscles way up here in the forearm. This is exceptionally unlikely to be a radial nerve injury because it's only one uh, tendon and there is evidence of, of uh, an injury very distal. So this is clearly an, an injury to the extensor tendon. Uh, the extensor tendon which uh, uh, runs dorsally uh, extends a pollicis longus and extends the interphalangeal joint of the thumb. So that's what's happened here. He's had uh, a, a, a injury to the extensor tendon, uh, courtesy of an uh, a, a angle grinder, and this now needs to be surgically repaired uh, and held in the extended position after repair for a period of three weeks, and then we'll start rehabilitating him with physiotherapy.